All right, well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the online service of the Church of Infinite Spirit. I'm Reverend Lauren Skye, one of the founders of this church. Our community has been meeting since 1999, and it's the mission of this church to support spiritual freedom by supporting people in knowing themselves as spiritual beings and as a part of the consciousness that creates this universe. And we celebrate that joyous transformation that comes from knowing oneself as spirit. Here, we hope to recapture the intention of church as a respite from the noise of life, as a space of remembrance of our spiritual nature, and as a place of joyful connection. We are non-dogmatic and non-judgmental. There's no punishment, control, or reward energy in this space. We respect your divine right to manage your energy as you choose and create your reality as you choose. It's always a take what you can use and leave the rest environment. When we share, it's with the intention of inspiring you to find your own truth rather than convincing you to agree with our truth. Some of you may have expected to be spending some time with Reverend Margaret today, but she's not feeling well. Nothing serious, we don't need to worry. She just has a stomach bug, but it was enough to keep her offline and resting today. So here I am and happy to be here and get to spend some time with you today. We always start our time together with a short meditation. So let's do that now. Meditation invites us out of the stories we're telling ourselves about what's true and invites us into deep spiritual truth where we have the power to claim that divine right to choose our experience, to manage our energy and to create reality as we choose. And doing so together, even remotely like this, we're together in spirit, if not physically. So meditating together is exponentially more powerful when done in a group. We'll walk through a four-step process to kind of come present as spirit and shift our energy, to take a break from everything that's going on around us and come into touch with everything that's going on within us. If you want to participate, it's helpful to close your eyes and put your feet on the floor for this style of meditation. And if you don't want to participate, that's just fine. You can hang out and maybe just feel the energy of being in an agreement where a lot of people are meditating. To begin, let's just take a nice deep breath. Mm, a big deep breath and settling into the moment. We always begin meditation with grounding. Grounding is an imaginary connection from the base of your spine to the center of the earth, from the first chakra energy center to the body's planet of origin. To begin grounding, simply notice that body of yours. It is your greatest creation as a spiritual being. There'll be sensations and emotions and thoughts running through that body. and All of that is fine. Just let it be whatever it is. You get to notice maybe your neck and shoulders. Perhaps they're relaxed today, perhaps a little tight. Anything is fine. Notice your back, your spine, the base of your spine. The base of your spine is the back of the first chakra energy center, the energy center from which we ground. And we do it by pretending or imagining or visualizing, whichever is more comfortable for you. So we do pretend, imagine, or visualize a colored beam of light growing from the base of your spine, just like a tail would tail of light growing from the spot where a tail would grow if you had one. And would you grow your tail of light right down through your chair and the floor and the building? 
Let that tail of light grow into the earth and the many, many layers of the earth. Watch that colored beam of light reach down, 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 all the way to the center of the earth. And when that colored beam of light reaches the center of the earth, imagine it connecting there or grabbing hold. If a colored beam of light doesn't work for you, you might try grounding with a tree root, a tree root growing from the base of your spine into the earth all the way down to the center, or plant stem. You are the flower. Grounding does so many wonderful things. It invites us as spirit more into the body. It invites a wonderful alignment of the chakras and the energy flowing through the chakras. And so importantly, grounding, this construct, the light, the tree root, it's called a grounding cord. The grounding cord provides a way for energy to release from us that we don't need. So much of the stress and pain that we carry in our worlds is simply a symptom of energy we don't need to be carrying recirculating through the chakra system. And when we ground, that energy has a place to go to the center of the earth, where it is received and transformed, recycled, as it were, into neutral creative force. You could even intend, I'm grounding and releasing everything that doesn't serve my highest good. The concerns and fears and worries. None of that is happening right in this present moment. Maybe a tiny bit of it is, and if you're grounded, you can handle it better. Imagine letting go, release to the center of the earth, all that you do not need. Know that the earth receives this energy with gratitude. It's only negative when we hold it. When we release it, it can be used as neutral energy. The second step of this four-step process is to open up the sixth chakra energy center. And that sixth chakra sits right in the middle of our heads. It's behind the eyes and between the ears. Pointing to my head, if you imagine two lines, it's where they meet. The physical equivalent of the sixth chakra is the pineal gland. And the way to open up the sixth chakra is to simply imagine being there, where we focus attention gets stronger. So if we imagine being in the middle of our heads, we can be anywhere and anywhere. We can scatter our energy in space and time. But when we focus in center of head, sixth chakra, we bring all that scatter home, all that power home to the present moment, the only moment that's real. Nice. The next step in this process is to manage the energy fields around us or for us. Everything emanates energy, people certainly, but even situations leave a residual energetic footprint. Objects are made of energy and resonate energy. And when we manage our aura field, we can be more aligned with the energy that we're experiencing and more in command of the energy we're experiencing. Again, we do it by imagination. You're grounded, you're sitting in the middle of your head. Would you imagine around you a big soap bubble or like an eggshell, a little boundary? The boundary is gonna be about an arm's length out all around you, kind of what we think of as personal space. Imagine a bubble around your personal space an aura bubble. Everything inside the bubble, you control. Everything outside the bubble, you just don't. <laughs> Sometimes that's the most important reminder of an aura bubble. We can choose our reality within and respond to the reality without. <clears throat> if you wanna make it stronger, a little stronger boundary around you, reminding you to stay in your space and to keep other energy out. 
you could paint the aura bubble a color. My aura bubble is purple today, as it is many days. It's my favorite color. You might want to pick your favorite color, or you might want to pick a color that represents boundary to you, or vitality to you, or peace to you, whatever you choose. People often wonder what color is my aura. We can actually choose what color would feel good. You can imagine your bubble coming to that color or you painting your bubble that color. So you're now grounded. Attention is focused in the sixth chakra center of head and you've got your aura bubble around you. This is a powerful stance of consciousness where you can choose to let go and choose to let in. We've let go down the grounding cord. Now let's let in, let's bring in some energy we'd like to experience. You might notice what you've been seeking. Maybe you've been seeking some peace. Maybe you've been seeking some clarity, some fun. Whatever you've been seeking, you can create it and receive it. And here's how. Above your head, would you imagine a big golden ball, like a big gold sun, literally a sun right above your head? Well, maybe six to eight inches above your head. Make it big, at least as tall as you are, is a reasonably sized gold sun for this exercise, but it could be even bigger, bigger, bigger. How much energy can you receive? The golden sun is neutral energy. We're gonna set it at the vibration you've been seeking. Would you distill the vibration you've been seeking down to a word? Maybe it's fun, freedom, clarity, peace, joy. Pick one for now, it's so effective to create with one word. And would you imagine writing that word across your golden sun, golden ball of energy? Watch what happens. It's much like dropping food coloring into water. The sun will receive, absorb, match, and multiply the word and become a big golden sun of the frequency you've chosen. Rather than seek, you create and become an attractor of more. So you're going to end up with a big gold sun of joy, fun, freedom, clarity, or whatever you've chosen above your head. And when you've imagined that, would you imagine popping or dropping the sun? You could set the sun right into your body, bringing it into your reality, or you could reach up with your imaginary finger and poke a hole in the bottom of the sun and let that golden light stream right into your body, right into your reality. Becoming what we seek. Receive the vibration you've chosen and let it fill you up head to toe. So it's gonna fill your whole head and neck and shoulders. It's gonna fill up your torso and your back, your arms, all the cells and the spaces between the cells, and your torso, all your organs, all the way down to your legs, knees, all the way down to your feet and toes, fingers and fingertips. And if you should get so full that you can't receive any more, let it spill into the aura around you, setting the environment around you at the vibration you'd like as well. If you want to bring in more than one vibration, I suggest bringing in multiple gold suns, each of a different vibration, like a triple scoop ice cream cone instead of a salad sun, it just tends to be more effective. So if you're like, hey, I want a clarity and joy, you can bring in the clarity and then bring in the joy. Bringing in a gold sun of a vibration you imagined you've been seeking and becoming the vibration. It's a really powerful exercise of your spiritual abilities. Notice if there's a difference in how you feel than you felt a few minutes ago. And the paradigm of information that we work with, the energies we carry in our bodies, the chakras and aura are reflected back to us by the experiences around us and how we respond to them. So we do have this great power to create change from the inside out. 
You might want to stay right here in this meditation to receive the message today. Or you might want to open your eyes and stretch. Whatever's right for you is fine. Today, I'd like to talk about plans. <laughs> Making plans, changing plans, letting go of plans. A little while back, we did some work with a woman whose husband died of a heart attack right in his mid forties. It was a big surprise to everyone involved, including him. And they have two young boys, so it's been a bit of a thing. It's quite a time. And at one point in our work, the woman said to me, don't you wish you knew the plan? Isn't that a great question? Don't we all wish we knew the plan? Don't we all wish there was a plan to know? And that's the thing. There isn't a big plan, the plan to know. The plans are all ours. So when this woman first asked this question, weirdly, it made me think of football. It's coming roaring back this year after a break. And even though I really dislike thinking about football, I'm married to a man who is a big football fan. Go Broncos, right? <laughs> and it's an exercise in compromise because I really do not enjoy football. And if you'd asked me 25 years ago when I was in the divorce process and my first marriage was ending, if I'd end up marrying a giant Broncos fan, I would have said, no way. That is not my plan. And I bet if you'd asked my husband 25 years ago when he was in the divorce process and his first marriage was ending, if he would have married a freebie psychic who runs a psychic school, he would have said, no way, that is not in my plan. We both intended to get married again, and we both had a plan for what it would look like. Thankfully, we'd let go of those plans by the time we met, and everything worked out great. So in football, there's the huddle, right? Here's the plan. Then we're going to run out on the field and see what happens. We kind of do that every day. Today, the plan was, well, do a little shopping, work on the yard, maybe see the grandkids. And then Margaret called, change of plan, and still a lovely day. Over the past two years, I've made plans four times to go see friends in Arizona. First, we were going to go in November of 2019. That trip got canceled, and I can't even remember why. It was pre-COVID. So then we planned again for March 2020. <laughs> ha ha, says the universe. Planned again for November 2020. Ha ha, still. And then November of this year, which I thought was a for sure. And that trip just got canceled for reasons on their side, which I totally understand. And I've totally let it go. It feels good to have no plan, yet an intention to go when it's time. Sometimes we kind of stick to a plan, even though the universe is inviting us not to, but we can still hold the intention. We all make plans. It's human nature and we need to make plans. Plans help us focus, they help us ground things, and they help us move forward in the path of manifestation. Where we get stuck is in attachment to the plan. And we almost always forget to put the potential for challenge kind of right in the plan. We all had plans for 2020. No, I did. And we all really had plans for 2021. <laughs> I know I did. The plan, though, is much like drawing a map of a hike before anyone's taken it. If there might be a lake there from where I, what I can see here, it looks like there's a lake there. There might be some elevation gain a little further out. But you don't know for sure until you've taken the journey especially on the pathway of manifestation. Plans are not to be held too closely for validation. We can't give our okayness to the plan. It's really about the that, that which I am manifesting, and not about the how. The how often unfolds in surprising and unplanned ways. Yet, we're often so surprised when things don't go as planned which seems very strange because they almost never do. Some people feel like they're a failure when plans don't come to fruition. And when we step back and look at that, 
that's really amazing given what plans really are. Plans really are a potential based on incomplete information. And that's all they can ever be because information about the future is always incomplete in linear time. The future is not only unknown, it's unknowable. And it's unknowable because it's unformed. It's not a secret, it just isn't decided. There are multiple potential timelines until we choose and choose and choose again. In our tendency to make plans, we can come to expect that spirit kind of has a big plan too, <laughs> but it's really just us that does the planning. Yes, there are intentions of the soul to grow and experience in the journey of humanness. There are agreements with other souls that are always negotiable to mutually fulfill intentions and further relationships or close them. There are opportunities as individuals and as a collective to create or not, to grow or not, to shift or not, to choose or not. But even if there were a big specific spiritual plan created by spirit, we'd still have to all run out on the field and see what happens anyway. So it wouldn't bring the comfort that we imagine it might. Often the plan at its core is a striving for a condition of sameness in circumstances, for life to be just so. But that's completely not the earth experience. What we're really striving for is a condition within that okayness, that contentment, that peace that we can create and claim anytime because it doesn't come from circumstances around us, it's such an illusion that it does. It comes from knowing ourselves as spiritual beings on the journey of earth. When we see plans for what they are, we can be open to the unknowable future. We can say, here's the plan, and now I'm gonna run out on the field and see what happens. And when I do, I'll adjust the plan and take a step and maybe adjust again and again and again. We all have desires, intentions. Again, the intention is the that. The plan is how. But on the human side, it seems every intention comes with a plan and that's fine, that's good. We just don't wanna get attached. I love me a plan, whether it's what's for dinner or the future of interconnection or what we'll do when my husband retires. Sometimes we talk about it, dreaming different dreams, playing with different plans, different potential timelines. When it happens, We'll run out on the field and see what happens. When we can have plans and not be attached to them, we can be in present time. And present time is the only thing that's real in earth. In the world of matter, it's one moment and the next and the next and the next. And in almost every single moment, things are okay. In almost every single moment, we have complete control, complete choice about our experience. Not control over what's happening, but control over our engagement with what's happening, our response to what's happening, our relationship with life, our choice of vibration. From present time, we can set intentions, enjoy making plans, and play the game of life. One way we set intention is with what we call the mock-up tool. The mock-up tool is a spiritual process where we focus intention, attention, and energy on a particular experience or even outcome. When we mock up, we tend to get really specific and that is pretty much never a great idea. Always suggest to keep it as loose as possible. 
the tendency is to narrow. It has to look like this. But that narrowing is almost always based on past experiences, past hurts, and limiting beliefs about what's possible. So if we can keep it loose so that you as a soul, knowing your intention and aware of your agreements, you as a soul can do its thing and create reality to fulfill the intention. I've talked about my partner some today. After I was divorced and spent some years dating, you know, I was kind of done with that. And then I did a mock-up, a one-sentence mock-up. Thank you, God, for the perfect partner for me in present time. And after that, I met Bernie, my husband now. Know how it would happen? No list of what it would look like. Just the perfect partner for me in present time. It's the that, not the how. The how can be fluid. So we're going to play with this in meditation today. If it's new to you and you want to learn more about it, you can find a lesson on mock-ups in our free Meditation for Living program on our website, innerconnection.org. Mock-ups is lesson five in that series. We're going to do a mock-up in meditation today, so it might be a little longer than our usual meditations together. So let the body be with it. If you come in and out of this, it's fine. If, you, uh, if the body fidgets, it's fine. Let's go back into meditation and play with this idea of intention and mock up. Do you notice that grounding cord of yours? Remember the connection from the base of your spine to the center of the earth? If it's fallen away, sometimes things do rattle us and the grounding cord just falls off. It's fine. You can always reimagine it, recreate it, re-see it. A connection from the base of your spine to the center of the earth, a colored beam of light, a plant stem, a tree root. Notice the stabilizing influence of the grounding cord. Perhaps the body feels a little more solid in the chair. Imagine being in the middle of your head. You've got your bubble around you, a boundary and a nest in a way for you to be in. Let's start off this meditation with one of those big gold suns. We can use big gold suns to create vibrations and we can also use them to call our energy back from where it might be scattered. Would you imagine that big golden ball above your head, big gold sun? And would you imagine calling your energy back from all the unmanifested futures, all the unmanifested plans. We can put our energy in the unmanifested future. And then if it goes differently, we can feel like a failure. So instead, let's call our energy out of those unmanifested futures. You can still enjoy planning. Imagine that big gold sun getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you call your energy home to your present time body. You might even add calling your energy forward from the past. You don't bring painful experiences with you. You're calling your energy out of them. So you're not living them now. So we're using this big gold sun to call our energy back, which might be scattered across time and potential timelines. That might be a really big gold sun. That thing might get really big. That's great. When it does get big, when you have called yourself into that gold sun, would you imagine popping or dropping that sun and filling yourself in with your own energy right in present time? You're gonna pop, drop that sun, set it right into your body or poke a hole in the bottom and let the energy stream in and receive, receive, receive your essence vibration as a spiritual being. As that energy comes in, allow or intend, you're occupying your body more and more in present time, from which each moment is created, from which each choice of vibration is made.
Mm, nice. Next, we'll do a maca. Think of a maca like placing your order with spirit. Spirit stands by your side, comes to your table. What would you like? Here's a way to place your order. Imagine a rose in front of you. We use roses so much in this paradigm of information. Lovely spiritual vibration, lovely spiritual symbol, the vastness of consciousness, the depth of spirit, the beauty of earth. If you visualize a rose in front of you, pretend, imagine, that's creating in spirit. And if you don't like the rose you visualize, just toss it away. In fact, if you would, toss it over your right shoulder. It'll be taken away by your spiritual guides and destroyed. If you know how to do this, please do. Take it out, destroy that rose. If you're new, throw it over your right shoulder. Visualize a rose until you visualize a rose that you like. Ooh, it's so beautiful, it's perfect color. Just let it hang out there. Radiating, being beautiful. And next, imagine, begin to notice something you intend to manifest. And imagine a photo of it, just like snapping a picture of the manifestation at fulfillment. This is so important, the manifestation at fulfillment. So this would be me sitting in a beautiful vista in Arizona. My friends, by my side. It's done. The picture is always at fulfillment. So it's you in that new house, if you're looking at moving. It's you in that new job, if you're looking at changing. And you don't have to know any of the details. It's just you in that condition of success. The picture is your order. The rose is like the order pad. Put the picture in the rose. Imagine sliding it right into the rose, no kidding. Putting the image in the symbol. The rose might shimmer, change color, or become more alive. Now, we placed our order with the universe, with spirit. Are there any other considerations around this order? For if you were ordering, maybe you'd want to say it's gluten-free, or I want the green salsa or the red salsa. And here's where it gets tricky because we don't want to put in too many details. Keep it as loose as possible. Remember, the perfect partner for me in present time, one sentence, one picture, me in a relationship that's perfect for me in present time. That's all it was. So think simplified. Your simplification may seem like you're not putting enough in the mock-up. However, your simplification frees spirit and you as a spiritual being to play with reality and unfold timelines in ways you might never imagine. So put the picture in the rose and then any, if you must, any details. Maybe there are none needed. Then we're gonna put little gold suns into this rose that represents the vibrations you'd like to fuel the journey with. When we create a mock-up, when we do this, put the picture and the rose together, we're saying, I'm willing to take a journey, a journey of growth, a journey of change, a journey of change within me that allows the fulfillment of my intention. What, experience, what energies would you like to fuel the rose up with? Maybe fun. Maybe you want the process to be fun along the way. I sure do. I'm going to put a gold sun, put the word fun in there right above the rose and drop it into the rose. You're fueling the rose with vibrations. It's going to absorb and integrate the suns. 
all these visualizations, these tools are simply ways we engage with spirit. What else would you like in that sun? Clarity? Permission? So many energies you could fuel up a mock up with. Imagine what you'd like to put in it. If the gold sun is just too complicated for you, just put the words in the roses. Pardon me, just put the words in the rose. Fun, clarity, ease. I have a friend who always puts in cooler than I can imagine. Maybe you want to put prosperity in there. Mock up involves funds. Love in there. Create it your way. Those of you who know how, please top off this rose with the gold sun of havingness, H-A-V-I-N-G-N-E-S-S. -S. You've heard me talk about having this many times. And if it's new to you, again, Med for Living on the website, Lesson 5. Now we're going to let it go. Letting it go invites, again, us as spirit, the vastness of consciousness, our guides, other souls we have agreements with to help it play out instead of us holding, holding tight, tight, tight. And how we're going to let it go is to imagine that rose in front of you inside a big balloon. It's fun if the balloon is gold or pink. If you don't like gold or pink, use whatever color you'd like. And then imagine, let it go. Like ordering, you would not follow the waiter back to the kitchen and supervise the process. You would be at the table, present, trusting that the order is arriving. You do have to show up to the process. Great. If you find you follow the balloon as it's going away, come back, be in the middle of your head. Now, this part is so important. You're still in meditation. As you sit in a meditative stance of consciousness, would you notice how you imagine you're gonna feel when the mock-up is manifested? Are you gonna feel peace then? Are you gonna feel happy then? Are you gonna feel successful then? Notice how you imagine you're gonna feel when the mock-up manifests and distill those feelings down to words representing vibrations. Maybe I'm gonna feel safe, content, and joyful. Pick one of those words and give it to yourself now in a big gold sun. Gold sun above your head, what's one of the words? Contentment. Watch the sun absorb, become, match, multiply the word. Pop or drop the sun, bring it in. You know how we've done it a few times now. Notice the flavor of the energy you're bringing in, filling yourself head to toe with golden light, vibrating at that intention, pardon me, that vibration. How does it feel? Can you have it? Are you willing? This part is so important because as we become the energies that we imagine we're going to feel when the mock-up comes in, we become attractors and creators instead of seekers. We still show up, we move through the process, we engage with life. We don't hide away and wait for something to happen. We go for it, but we go for it from the vibration of attracting what we'd like creating. From this space, we can give ourselves the freedom to make plans and not get hung up on them and not give our okayness away to them. And we can allow the possibility of change in the how on our journey to the that. You might take a moment here to give yourself another big gold sun, why not? Remember the golden ball, the gold sun, the word representing the vibration, 
love, fun, freedom, whatever you're looking at. Writing the word across the sun, watching the sun absorb and become, multiply that word, that vibration, that frequency, and then pop or drop and receive all through you. Watching that gold light stream in, come in, head to toe. And as it does, know that the golden sun is always integrated into your being. So there's always room for more. You're full of gold sun energy. If you'd like, you could stretch your body and open your eyes and come out, or you might want to stay right there in your meditation space. I want to reiterate the importance of bringing in the vibrations that you're seeking so that you match what you're creating and become an attractor of more of the same. Very powerful. Seems like we can't do it, but I assure you, if you try it, you can. All right. So were we in person, this would be the time in the church service where we would ask for contributions to the Church of Infinite Spirit. We literally pass baskets and take donations. But we can't do that now. So instead, we receive donations with deep gratitude on our website, interconnection.org, on the sanctuary page. There's a button there you can click. And please do consider supporting us if it feels right for you. We always ask that you contribute from the heart, not from obligation. Perhaps your contribution is financial. Perhaps it's simply supportive energy. Hey. Those folks are doing good things. I'd like them to be able to continue. We are a nonprofit, so your donations are tax deductible and they do make a big difference. Even small donations mean a lot because they all come together. They help with the website maintenance, these platforms that we use, uh, that we use for free offerings and that we use for classes. We do appreciate the contributions deeply, and we always trust and pray and hope that to the totality of today's contributions return to each one here many, many fold. When we pass the baskets at in-person church, which by the way, the plan is that we'll be doing in-person church in November. We'll see, <laughs> that is the plan. We'll be ordaining ministers in November. Um, so we'd love to do that in an in-person service. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the universe says about that. But were we in person and we pass baskets, we always tell jokes when we do. So I've got a couple of good ones today. Why don't Buddhists vacuum in the corners? Because they have no attachments. Um, if Eve, I need to like laugh track. <laughs> if Eve sacrificed the human race for an apple, what would she do for a Klondike bar? Um, when one door closes and another opens, it's time to move because your house is haunted. <laughs> uh, and what is the astrologer's favorite chocolate bar? A Mars bar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough of this. Uh, before we close our time together, thank you, Jody. Jody gave me a smile face. Before we close our time together today, I just want to give you a couple of announcements. Uh, we have a class coming up. It's called Awakening Empath, Energy Tools for the Awakening Empath. It's going to start on September 9th at 10 a.m. for 90 minutes, six weeks of 90-minute sessions with Elizabeth Diamond. And information about that class is up on our website on the classes page of interconnection.org. We also have Clairvoyant Training Module 3 starting September 14th on Tuesdays. If we've had Clairvoyant Training Modules 1 and 2, might check that out on the website as well. And on October 9th, the Saturday, I'll be doing a workshop for all grads, not just grads in the spiritual journey, but all grads will be invited to a workshop on peace and present time on October 9th. And that's up on the website too. So as we get ready to close today, I invite you to enjoy the journey, 
Make your plans and run out on the field and see what happens. Know that you are never playing alone. Spirit is with you. Your guides are with you. We are with you. And your community connections are with you. I thank you deeply for being here today, both here with me and here in Earth in Divine Timing. And I thank you for your giving of your time and attention, two of your most precious resources in incarnation that I receive with deep honor and gratitude. We'll be staying on the Zoom call for a little social time for anybody who wants to visit for a while. So if you'd like to just stay on the call. And if not, this is probably a good time to bid us goodbye for the day. I'll say bye for now to everyone and I will see you next time.